the nonprofit podcast powered by DonorBox. Giving season is here, and today we have got some essential tips and tricks. These are giving season must dos for any organization this time of year. Welcome to the nonprofit podcast. I'm Kara, fundraising coach at DonorBox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. And I'm delighted to share the podcast studio with some colleagues I respect so much. We have Jenna, our nonprofit advocate at DonorBox, Kara, our content specialist, Bobby, who serves as our account manager, and our senior account executive, Amy. Welcome. Welcome. So glad to have you guys here. Thanks Hello. for having us, Kara. Hi. Super excited to be here. Well, I really am honored to be surrounded by colleagues here at DonorBox who have actually worked in nonprofits from fundraising and operations to volunteer engagement and donor relations and communications and digital media. We've been in your shoes and we get it. And each one of these awesome individuals works with DonorBox organizations every day to help them help others. And speaking of our DonorBox organizations, we've recently asked for questions from our podcast listeners and our webinar attendees. And wouldn't you know it, the first question we received couldn't be more timely. An organization in Pennsylvania is tackling their first giving season and asked this question, we are brand new to donation campaigns and fundraising. What would you recommend as must-do tasks and activities that we should focus on to capitalize on Giving Tuesday and the remainder of Giving Season? So I have uh, marshaled the full DonorBox podcast posse, and each of these specialists are here today to make sure that we have covered all the bases, from donation buttons to tax receipts and everything in between. So let's start at that entry point. Let's jump in with you, Bobby. What are your final thoughts on donation page must do's or maybe don'ts that are important this time of year? At this point, my last reminder or final thought is to make sure that the spine of your strategy is in prime working order. Run a few more tests, check that everything included on your donation form and collected in your donation form is purposeful and clear. And if you can, to really help smooth things out, ask your friends or coworkers to audit the process. Make sure someone unfamiliar with where to go and what is being asked can easily identify both your intent and the steps to get there to ensure a smooth experience for both you and your support. This is the time to tap into your network and get any last feedback. And at this step, we don't need to be making big overhaul changes, but having fresh eyes, whether you're revisiting your donation page to do a comb through or asking someone else to look it over can save you from both easy mistakes like a spelling error or more costly mistakes like a broken link you forgot about. There's still time to dot the I's and cross your T's. So my last reminder is to make sure you schedule a few moments to truly make sure you thoughtfully do that. Bobby Joe, you just mentioned tapping into networks. So I want to talk about that for a minute. So every nonprofit has a network of supporters. So people who already care about what you're doing, right? So if you want to get new people involved in your mission, though, then you need to spread the word outside of that network. This is really important. So crowdfunding, if you're not familiar, um, is a really affordable way for new as well as established nonprofits to raise hundreds and even thousands. And I've seen a lot of success um, with our nonprofit users with crowdfunding. Uh, but not only does crowdfunding make it easy to keep your current supporters engaged by consistently updating them on your campaign's progress, but the power of Shareability and virtual donor walls uh, will automatically work as social proof for potential donors too. So potential donors, that's really, really important for them. And crowdfunding is especially great for campaigns that have a deadline, such as Giving Tuesday or a year-end campaign, which is why I wanted to talk about it now. Uh, and if you're making a crowdfunding page for giving season, which I highly suggest, I want you to keep these tips in mind. So first, uh, choose a captivating title and tagline. This may seem obvious, but it's really important. Titles and taglines are a part of your campaign's branding and will really help you stand out in the crowd. Just like a great email might have a great subject line, your title and tagline serves the same purpose. So you really want to keep the title and tagline simple. And there are some free 
online SEO tools that you can use to find the best keywords so that you show up in Google or whatever that may be. And as you continue to add content, don't use too many technical terms or jargon that's specific to your sector. Be clear and direct with your ask and call to action. And content used for these campaigns must be really easy to understand and give people a reason to subscribe to your campaign. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, um, it's really important to tell a story with high quality images and videos. So crowdfunding brings you the most success through storytelling. You can tell your beneficiary stories or your own story behind starting your nonprofit or the goals for this particular year end campaign. But the images you use for your campaign are just as important as the content. And videos can help you raise four times more than any other storytelling method. So that's a really cool thing to consider. And then finally, uh, my last tip for crowdfunding is perhaps the most important, and that's add your social media sharing buttons. That's the whole point of crowdfunding is to make it really shareable. So since your crowdfunding campaign is entirely online, you'll want to share your story wherever possible to get the best results and get the furthest reach. So on your campaign page, include your social media sharing buttons to ensure donors and visitors are capable of sharing your campaign on all of their social media accounts as well. So it's just one click and it's an easy share. And this will significantly expand your campaign's reach and success. So a lot to consider here, but crowdfunding really is a great tool for giving season. And you are spot on. We have had some of our DonorBox Academy students recently share some of their crowdfunding campaigns with us for critique. And Bobby Joe, you've seen a few of these. Aren't they awesome? Yes, they were amazing. And I'm super proud of the work they did. And I love that organizations can post a goal meter on their crowdfunding page too. And that's always a nice incentive this time of year. Absolutely. I love the sense of urgency that those goal meters create for this really time sensitive fundraising season. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to give a second piece of advice for giving season, if you don't mind. Uh, So my next piece of advice is do not do it alone. You don't need to do it alone. And this is, Kara, where peer-to-peer fundraising comes in. And I know you were expecting that. So peer-to-peer fundraising is another way to engage your supporters and maximize your reach, raise more funds and awareness for your cause, and really tap into those networks that we've been talking about. And this fundraising method is especially impactful during giving season where people are feeling more generous with their time and their money, right? And I love peer-to-peer fundraising so much because it's a great way to bring in new donors who might not otherwise give to your organization or even know about your organization. But not only this, but it's, in my opinion, the most effective way to connect with and build relationships with the supporters you already have. So this year's your board, your board should be fundraising for you, your volunteers, and even your current donors that you know really well. And it also boosts your year-end efforts and awareness by turning those supporters into your ambassadors for your organization or even marketers for your campaign. And it helps raise more donations and meet your revenue goals for less because your supporters are doing a lot of that legwork for you and your staff. So if your nonprofit doesn't have a large donor base yet and you're kind of wondering, okay, where are these giving season and year-end dollars coming from? Uh, Peer-to-peer fundraising is the perfect tool to consider. And conversely, if your nonprofit already has a large donor base, but even loftier fundraising goals, peer-to-peer can really help to amplify your impact too. So my biggest piece of advice about peer-to-peer fundraising for your nonprofit is to Be prepared. Be prepared. Do not wait until the last minute to set up your peer-to-peer campaign for giving season. I cannot emphasize this enough. There is a fair amount of work to do at the front end of a peer-to-peer fundraiser. So you need to have a plan in place on training your supporters. You need to create toolkits complete with email and social media templates that are ready for your supporters to use and have everything in place so everyone can hit the ground running when the time comes to launch this campaign. And not only does this ensure that you can reach as many people as possible during giving season, but it also ensures that you don't waste any time on things like setting up processes or creating content when there are a lot more important things to do. So the good news is to help with this, we created a great course in DonorBox Academy on peer-to-peer fundraising that includes resources, tips, and handy templates to help you get set up for success. And we'll leave that in the show notes. We will indeed. And that course also explains a little more about the difference between crowdfunding and peer-to-peer fundraising. They're similar enough 
that they often get confused. So that should be really helpful. Amy, what are your thoughts about giving season? What are your last minute must do's? Thanks for asking there. No, I would say one of the biggest things to watch out for is to really make sure that your organization's mission is connecting to the dollars that you're hoping to fundraise. Um, Just to kind of go back to Bobby Joe's point, it's critical that everything on that donate page is perfect and professional. And a key of that is connecting the mission to the dollars. Some ways to do that is having the form on your website, having it embedded onto your website, or even having a pop-up on your home page. Another key there is to make sure that the actual form is really matching your branding and your messaging. That's going to be having the exact same hex color code. And that's also going to mean having a call to action on that form. You only get one chance to have a call to action for your donors. You've put in the work to convince them that your mission is important and that their dollars are important for your mission. But you have to close the deal. You have to ask them to actually donate. One of my favorite examples is by No Baby Blisters. And their call to action on their form is medically neglected babies depend on you. Please choose your monthly or one-time gift below so they never run out of life-saving surgeries. Make sure that you let the donors know and that you're asking them to take action and to donate to your organization. That's absolutely right. Connection is key in this field. And the faster the connection, the better. It's all about connecting with your donors and ensuring they have an easy, enjoyable experience. And not just when it comes to final preparation for or something like Giving Tuesday. This should also be built into every experience your donors have with your cause year round. And one quick and super easy way to implement this through your online donation form and to make the process simple and speedy is offering your supporters quick wallet payment methods for their donation, like Apple Pay, Google Pay, or Venmo, and enabling DonorBox's ultra swift checkout setting, which moves these options to the beginning steps of the form. So supporters see them up front and have a more streamlined donation process. I'm sure we have all started a checkout of some kind, whether it was a donation, payment, or start to an online shopping cart. And when it comes to entering the credit card details, you put that checkout on hold because you're way too comfy on the couch or whatever the case may be, maybe that one's just on me. (laughs) No way, Bobby Joe, you're totally right. If you're forcing your donor to get up to get a credit card, you've lost a donation. Yes, there's definitely a good chance in offering these payment methods to your supporters upfront and streamlining your form ultimately simplifies the steps and information they're required to enter, which can be particularly beneficial when donating from a mobile device. And enabling ultra swift checkout is super easy on DonorBox. It's literally just clicking a button on your campaign editor. And that is truly great advice from both of you. Thank you. And it's super simple too. We've talked a lot about the operations. So getting the forms ready and empowering supporters, making sure it's easy for a donor to give. But let's talk about how to share the big giving season message. Kara, how can you create a compelling case and then share that case with potential donors to encourage them to support your organization this time of year? Sure. So kind of continuing to talk about, you know, truly connecting and engaging with your donors, uh, you want to make sure that they're having these great experiences with your organization. And I'm saying experiences, plural, for a reason, because once is not enough. Amy talked about that call to action. It is not enough to just give them that call to action, give them that message one time. So make sure you're not just sending your appeal once and just be done for the rest of the season. That You really don't want to do that because your potential donors typically need to see your message seven to 12 times and in different ways before they make that gift. So this means you should create a multi-channel marketing and fundraising raising campaign that covers all the ways you can reach your audience. So I'm talking direct mail, social media, email, ads, your website, phone calls, events, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. But you don't have to start from scratch every time because I know you're thinking, what in the world? How am I going to create all of this content? Especially, you know, it's it's November. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> but you don't have to start from scratch. Start by writing your direct mail appeal or the one that I hope you've already written by now. <laughs> take that, take that direct mail appeal and 
and find those great nuggets, stories, etc., and repurpose them for your other channels. Don't copy and paste. You should still adjust things like tone, length, and visual elements for the channel and audience. For example, with email and social media, you can you definitely want to make sure you're putting in those visual elements that we talked about a little earlier, those videos, those super emotional invoking, evoking stories and photos. And you can also social posts should be a lot shorter than that appeal letter, right? As can emails and more casual, but you really don't need to rec- recreate the wheel. And I suggest even breaking things up. So take an impactful story about someone or maybe a dog or a place you helped into multiple social posts or emails to get even more outreach out of that one source. So this also builds suspense, encouraging your audience to come back for more. So again, not only is this saving you time, it's also better ensuring those donations because you're getting that message in front of your audience more than one way and more than once. And to add to that point, I want to make sure that you are spreading your messaging and outreach throughout the entire giving season. And this means the last couple of months of the year. I mean, really all year round, but especially right now. So while so many are rightly focused on Giving Tuesday, it isn't the only focal point or even the biggest focal point you need to leverage. Uh, The biggest focal point of the year should actually be the last three days, those last three days in December because that's when at least 10% of all annual giving, I'm talking about all the funds you're going to raise all year, at least 10% is going to be raised in those three days. So make sure you're posting on social media, you're sending that final email reminder to those lists to encourage those last minute gifts. And this is because a lot of donors give at this time to make sure they can get that gift in before the tax year ends. And others may give again or give for the first time if they see you are getting close to reaching your goal and they want to help you get there. Another great incentive is to ensure that you have tribute gifts enabled on your form. I know that on DonorBox, you can easily set that up onto any donation form. A couple of benefits with that is you want to be able to allow your donors to make a donation in honor of someone. It's becoming increasingly popular to make donations in honor of friends or close ones. On DonorBox, when somebody makes a donation in honor of someone, when the donation's complete, we automatically send the honoree an email that you, the organization, have already customized. And even to make it a little bit more personal, the donor can leave the honoree a message, really allowing them to connect their own message and really being able to connect the donation as a gift to the honoree. This is also a great way to get in front of somebody who might not be aware of your nonprofit, but clearly they share your value and support your mission. Not only are tribute donations important for honorees, but it's also important that people can make a donation in memory of a loved one. The holidays are a really hard time for people who are missing someone who's not here anymore. It's a way to allow your donors to connect to their loved ones who aren't here anymore. I know that every year I personally make a donation to Girls on the Run in Vermont in memory of my mom. Uh, This organization really empowers young women to become strong, brave, confident leaders for tomorrow. And that is exactly how my mom raised me. So every year I make this donation in her memory and I feel a little closer to her. I know that she's somewhere smiling and, and really proud that I'm able to continue her legacy by making this donation to a great organization. What a thoughtful gift for someone. And that is a great way to wrap up our giving season must-dos today. Any other last thoughts? Yeah. uh, So I want to remind folks, things can and probably will go wrong at some point, or maybe not wrong, but maybe not according to plan. And that's totally okay. We've always got you covered here at DonorBox. And all I can add here is if you have any challenges, we have the best, the best support team on the planet here at DonorBox. And I swear I'm not biased. We get amazing testimonials all the time about our amazing support team. So our support team is available 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday. They have 
an amazing response time. They're so speedy to respond and they're fully connected into every aspect of our product and our services. But what I think really makes them stand out, and again, we hear this from many of our nonprofit users, is that they truly put the time and especially the care into making you um, making sure that you're set up for success. So you can reach out to our support team at support at donorbox.org and we'll share this email in the show notes as well. We really will. And there's always a real person on the other end of that email, which is really special too. Well, thank you guys. This is really a great run through of the must do's for any organization this giving season. So let me see if I can do a really quick review here. First, check your donation page and ask friends to audit the process for you. Then broaden your base with crowdfunding and peer-to-peer to engage and expand your reach. And then next, make sure your mission is front and center through compelling calls to action and a beautifully branded giving experience. And then make it simple and speedy with Ultra Swift Pay. And of course, don't forget, once is not enough, no one and done. Keep sharing your message all giving season long. And especially don't forget those last three days of the year. And as Amy reminded us, you can encourage tribute or memorial donations for your organization as a great last minute gift idea too. And you know, I think I'll add one more tip to round out this episode. I'll encourage any organization at any time to be sure to remember the importance of donor stewardship by saying thank you in a thoughtful way when donors give at year end or really any time. You lay the groundwork to inspire continued engagement and repeat giving next year. You can customize your tax receipt letters and really use those as an impactful stewardship piece too. Because remember, fundraising is all about relationships. And if you want to know more about peer-to-peer, like Jenna mentioned, plus get those checklists and templates to share with those fundraising on your behalf, you can get our free peer-to-peer toolkit at academy.donorbox.org. The link is in the show notes. And while you're there, you will notice an Ask Me Anything form. If you would like to have your question answered like today's listener did, All you have to do is click the link, open the form, and ask. And we will only mention you by name if you give us permission to do so. So my question is, what do you want to know? So thank you, Jenna and Bobby, Amy, Kara. Thank you guys for giving your time today and your insight and expertise for all the must-dos for giving season. I am so glad you are here. Thanks, Kara. And thank you for choosing to spend time with the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Don't forget to download and review the podcast or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. Your review is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others and we're here to help you. So until next time, stay inspired. People, passion, connection, action. Put the power to change the world in your supporters' hands this giving season. Maximum reach, maximum impact. Feel the fundraising power of connection. DonorBox Peer-to-Peer, helping you help others.